rather than Australian. Mm. <laughs> and I remember hearing you talk about being living in South Africa for a bit. So no, sixty-three years. I was born and raised in South Africa. I didn't realize. Oh mm. wow. We only moved to Australia three years ago. Oh, okay. So both you guys were there. Mm-hmm. That's yep. interesting. Yep. I um, had a weekend of where I was watching movies about uh, South Africa and Nelson Mandela and all that was something I really didn't know well. Mm-hmm. I... I was, I don't know, I wasn't very culturally sound as a, a kid. I sort of, I grew up in a little bit of a toxic environment at home. And so being safe at home was actually more important and sort of kept in that little bubble. Yeah. And then ended up staying, marrying into toxic for a while. But I've been out for about 15 years or about, I guess about 12 years. So, but I have a lot of bubbles around a lot of things. So I've embraced a lot of cultural things since I'm now very safe at home and, and like to go back and I'm not a book reader, never have been, but I, I, I love storytelling and I love stories. So I try to find movies that I feel like are accurate mm-hmm. and, you know, it's something, but um, so, yeah, I, I, weekend just saw something about it and kept finding more and watched Inviticus and some really good movies that I felt I could trust but definitely have a lot of I guess sorrow for what I wasn't aware of that I couldn't have been more uh I guess aware Mm. I don't I feel like I'm a bad citizen. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> I do good and personal and like friends. And I, you know, I can keep up with that well. And I feel good about it. But yeah, I've always felt. And I traveled for the first time uh, in 2017. I think it was 17. Uh, internationally. And I wow. went out of- well, for three years, for three weeks. Um, and just had an incredible adventure, but it's opened up my eyes. And I'm also a volunteer uh, alumni coach for a right. global service design group. And so I work with learners from all over. I've been in conversations with people from France and Hong Kong at the same time. It's amazing. Oh, it's uh, amazing what you can do. Yes, yes. So I'm I've, I've my, my uh, second life, <laughs> sort of how I see it. I'm definitely much more globally minded and try to be aware uh, and empathetic. And I was a Southerner. So I, I call myself a reformed Southerner. Um, sort of, I mean, I had, I'm from, you know, German stock that came to Virginia in the early colonies before we ever even started fighting and sort of just took my story as, you know, we're tried and true Southerners and have had to really go back and think about um, did what I believe was it really true. But I had very good Christian, very, No one in my family, even though I come from Confederate stock and I know that, no one in my family that I knew ever reacted that way. And my grandfather and grandmother were very good Christian people. And so, but you know, when you have your beliefs, you have to question them a bit to make sure. And so I I call myself a reformed southerner. So I don't know how many people you have signed up. Did you have anybody sign up? Okay. And I told Michael earlier, I asked Melissa, because we talked about uh, that some were low on signups. And I asked specifically, I think, about Michael's. But what she said was, we would go ahead and push them. Mm-hmm. And you- I've been told that before. Whether it's just me on my own or not doesn't matter. That I just go for it. 
Right. Well, if that's the case, um, and if it's just the one, I think you can get them on. But you're live. You're gone. You're going. Great. And, and you go well, and have a sleep. <laughs> go, go to bed. <laughs> you have a Thank good day, you guys. Thank you so much for for doing it with me and for for being here for us. We really do appreciate it. I enjoy it. I do. I like talking to. Uh, people I don't get to talk to all the time. So you guys have a great day. We will do. Thank you so much. <clears throat> have a great day. Bye. Right. We are live and we are looking at the idea of upcycling plastics. We have so many different types of plastic that we toss in the bin or we toss where we shouldn't. And these plastics end up where they shouldn't, like in the ocean. So today, I'm going to try and show you some of the ways you can upcycle your plastic and turn it into some really nifty ideas that you could use. So if you're a night owl and you're sitting listening to me, grab yourself a cup of tea, curl up nice and warm. It's not so cold any longer, so just curl up and enjoy what you are seeing today. I'm going to start sharing my screen uh, in a second. Let me see. Mm, my computer's playing silly bees. All right, let's see if it'll do it now. Ah, there we go. We are finally able to share. Right, we are going to share uh, we are now going to be talking about simple ways to upcycle plastic. There are so many really interesting ways to upcycle our plastic. So let's have a look at the different ones that we've got. Uh, I want to go into a live screen. Let me go into a live screen. Hmm. Okay, now it is. Right, we learn from each other. And those of you joining on the live uh, streaming, it, the best way to participate is to join us and register. Then you can ask questions and you can have some time with us. We don't promote any products. If a product is mentioned, it's purely for the fact that it's something we use or it's something we've used for so long that we use it as a name instead of a brand. Right, little about me, I live in Perth, Australia. I've been an educator for 44 years and I enjoy creating and making things, including puzzles. I have a great love of animals and I really enjoy being a get set up guide because I no longer educate, I now share ideas and that for me is awesome. Right, so what can we do with these things? Old containers that have had yogurt, cheese, cream cheese, feta cheeses, old bottles, bottles that uh, are drinking bottles, bottles that have had chemicals in them, uh, five liter bottles, 10 liter bottles, two liter bottles. What do we do with all of these? Plastic drinking cups, what can we do with those? So let's find out. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is plastic bags. What do I do with a plastic bag? What you do is you cut your plastic bag into strips. The strips are about that wide. They can be wider, but I find that this sort of width is a good width and sometimes they go a bit skinny. It doesn't matter. Now, there are two ways you can work with them. You can either take three different pieces and just plait them. Simple plaiting as you used to do for your hair, your children's hair. And one piece actually makes a really long piece, makes about a meter of um, plaiting. So that's a fair amount before you need to add extra pieces to it and continue with your plaiting. 
And you add the extra pieces in the same way as you would add extra uh, extensions to your hair. All you do is just slide the piece on and continue going as if it was always there. And as you go down, so you can then continue to plait your piece. If you take a, a plastic bag, you cut it just in long strips because then you've got the down underneath and up the other side. You can also to choose to do crocheting. If you're a person who enjoys crocheting, you take your crochet hook and you continue to crochet. But when you crochet, you do not get long pieces. You only get a short piece like this. So there's a lot of joining that goes on in the crocheting, but crocheting also works very well. And then you can crochet into each other piece. If I'm crocheting, I would not use thin. In future, I will use nice thick pieces because then it makes it more bulky and much easier to work with. So the skinnier the pieces, the thinner your crochet, the thicker the pieces, the bigger your more your you will crochet. You can then turn it into a variety of things. You can put it around a tin can and make it into a planter. You can make it into a waste paper basket, slippers, uh, a cloth to go on your tray that you have made. You can even turn it into a basket. There are a myriad of things you can do with your plastic bags. Now, other things that can be done with plastic bags. If you cut thick pieces, you can make a nice strong skipping rope and the children can have a lot of fun skipping and you can skip too. It's a good way of keeping your exercise going. You don't have to go out and buy a fancy skipping rope. Just make your own rope out of the old um, shopping bags that you have brought home and used for three, four, five, six, seven times. Now they're looking a little bit old, a bit holy. Maybe they're not as strong as they used to be. This is the time to start using them in another form. You can also take all the soft ones that you have, the soft bags that come with the um, your bread, your rolls, anything where it's soft plastic, those can be put inside a cushion. They make a wonderful full filling for your cushions. And then you just zip it up. When you want to wash the cushion, you toss them out into a bin, do your washing and pack them all back in. Very, very simple, very, very easy. You can also take the end of the bottle, top end of a bottle, and you can just the very little ones like this and put a plastic bag over it. You can put the lid onto it and then you just take the lid off and you are able to then pour out what you need. Otherwise, you can have the lids that have a little open flap on them and you can put them into that. You can also decide instead of making plastic bags for their lunches, particularly if you're going on a picnic and each person wants a different kind of sandwich, what you can do is make your own little sandwich folders. Take your plastic, put it between two pieces of material and iron it. It just gives it some extra strength. After that, you can cut your material to fit, fold your material over so it doesn't fray and stitch it up. You can hand stitch it or if I've just got a, ah, here comes Melinda. Let me pop Melinda into class. Hi, Melinda, welcome to class. Nice to have you in class with us. Uh, oh, I've lost myself now. Doesn't matter. <laughs> nice to have you, Melinda. Right. What you can take is you you then, you first of all, you iron the, the piece of uh, material, uh, uh, the plastic, then put the material on and fold over and stitch up. I've got one of those little handheld stitches purely because um, I've left my sewing machine behind when I left South Africa. Now, this little one works perfectly for small jobs. 
You've then got a plastic inside and a very pretty outside. You can put your sandwiches inside it. They can be in plastic if you like. And each one can have their name on it. And each person can get their own little package when you go on your picnic. It just makes it a lot of fun. They can also have it as part of their school lunches if you like. You can put a note inside for them just to make it something different. Now, our plastic bags. We have our plastic bags. Another thing you can do is to take a little Ziploc bag, cut off the zip part of it, just push your fingers through the plastic bag to make a little head, tie some elastic around it or some string around it, and cut six or seven legs, not more, skinny little legs, because if you have too many, it doesn't work very well. Once you've cut your legs, you cut all the rest of the plastic away. You fill the head with water, leaving only a little bit of air behind, and then tie it up nice and tight. You then fill a bottle with water, and you can add a little bit of food coloring to it, and put your uh, jellyfish into it. Now, I've had my jellyfish here. Now, because I can't see what I'm doing, this should be an interesting one. I hope you can see it. When I turn it upside down, there goes my jellyfish up to the top. When I bring it back down, there goes my jellyfish back down again. So the children love playing with it because the jellyfish turns around and goes up and down as many times as you require. All right. Now, that's just a few simple ideas, just using your old uh, shopping bags. Now, what about bottles? We have all kinds of bottles. What do we do with our bottles and containers? Well, one of the easiest things you can do with your container is to take two bottles. It can be a, a bigger, smaller, it's up to you. I've just chosen two medium size and I chose to make my zip in the middle. You can put your zip at the top or the bottom. When you've chosen your bottles, go and look in your old zips and see if you can find one that goes all the way around. Then all you do is stick it on one side onto one bottle and one side onto the other bottle and now you've got a container that you can put your pencils in. You can put a myriad of things inside. And once they're in, you then just zip it up again. Let me just get my zip working. I've pushed my zip a little far. Come on. There we go. Round goes my zip. And I've now zipped up my thing. And it is quite safe and easy to have. Very, very simple very effective way of using plastic bottles. You could put sweets in it, you could put anything you want to into it, and then you can just zip it open when you need. You could put, if you do crocheting, if you do uh, different hobbies and crafts, you can put the different things in there as well. And if you want it taller, you just decide where you want to put your uh, zip onto it. So that's a very good, very easy, simple one to do. You can also take the very bottom part of a bottle, right at the very bottom of the bottle, and you can then put different size ones or the same size onto a piece of um, thread. Um, the, you buy it by the meter and it's threaded. And then all you do is you put a nut and a bolt and they, they, put, they go together, you tighten them, and you can put it at different levels. You can use clear, you can paint them, you can put designs on them. You can do anything you want with them to make them attractive. And then you can hang things from them. You can hang your earrings off there. You can put your rings in there. It's a simple, easy place for you to have. You, the bigger one at the bottom, smaller ones at the top. The sky is the limit of what you want to put into them. So that is a lovely idea. If you've got two different things, if you've got a Tic Tac box container, those are perfect for putting your ribbon in. You just take the white out, 
the first time it takes a little bit of moving to get it out but after that it's quite easy you put in your ribbon and your ribbon then comes out through the hole at the top so that makes it very very simple and easy or if you buy um, paper fasteners um, uh, paper clips uh, or um, split pins they come in these little plastic containers that are easy to open and they also hang so you can put things in tighten them and then put a hook out and you can hang a whole lot of things on one particular place and it's easy for you to see and take them off and use them one of the things i forgot to say about your plastic when you're rolling it you just roll it round and round to make the size that you want and I when I'm making a container I actually put it over a bowl it's easier to go round and round the bowl and that makes it nice and smooth right going back to our bottles sorry about that I had forgotten that now you can also take your bottles cut a draw a shape that you want, cut a shape you want. And then I use a sponge and I dab it on. Now I like the effect where there's some little holes showing through, but if you don't like that, once it's dry, you dab it a second time and all the little holes fill up. And then you can put a face on, on it or design it as you wish. Lovely container for putting all sorts of things in, in a child's room, um, in a, a toy room and even in your bathroom, you can do a whole series of really interesting things. In your kitchen, you could have a, a, another set. So they can be used in lots of places. These little um, turtles are just an upside down lid uh, on a base. And what you do with that is you get a little hinge and you put a hinge onto it and you can then open and shut it you can keep coins in it you can keep marbles because you just turn it over put whatever you want inside turn it back and now the through the glass you can see what is inside it it's just a fun idea to do any questions melinda if if you want to just unmute and ask if you need to ask anything now, let's have a look at bottle lamps. You can make them in many different ways by just joining little parts of the bottom. So you use as many bottoms as you've got. You take your bottoms and you join them together. You glue them first and then you shape. Once they're glued, it's very easy to stretch them, to shape them into the shape you want. Because I would, I would glue four or five, then put them over a bowl and then put just an elastic band so that they start to form the way I want them to form. And then you go round and bring it in at the bottom, leaving enough space to put the electricals in so that it works. You can also make, <clears throat> sorry, let me just take a sip of water. Losing my voice today. You can also take the bottoms and make a big lamp. You can either turn them this way around so that the outside is showing or the inside is showing. You can paint them different colors and it gives a lovely effect. Sometimes you might so if you're looking at it from the inside, you can see it one way. When you're looking at it from the outside, you see it in a different way. You can use bottles, which you attach to a, I, I use the bases when you've got a big pot, those little plastic bases that you can get. That makes a wonderful top base. And then you attach your bottles to that and then do it in rings and between that, you attach your lights. So you have a whole lot of wires coming to each of the lamps and then your bottles in the center. It really does make a wonderful lamp. A friend of mine made one like that. You can use your old yolk containers to make a light as well. So the sky's the limit as far as the things that you can do. Now, another way of using big bottles 
what do you do with all your big bottles? My milk containers, I take them, I cut a square in the front where the handle is, and then into that I can put anything. I've got all my pegs. I, I use a lot of pegs. Where's my peg one? I use a lot of pegs when I'm working. And so my pegs are kept in the peg holder. When I want it, I just go pull it off the shelf and I can have others on top. I just pull the one I want out, the others drop down. And it's very, very easy to stack and store a lot of things in a container like this. If I don't have five liter ones because we, Michael and I don't use that much water or that, but the big five liter, 10 liter ones, you can turn them into really big drawers for um, storing in the garage or up in the attic where you want to store a series of stuff there you can just make your own little box that it fits onto and then they just slide in and it's a wonderful way of making a storage container if you're a gardener then your uh, softener bottles or your washing powder washing liquid uh, bottles are wonderful they are already colored most of them but if they are not colored acrylic paint works wonders you cut what you want to out they cut with the scissors you don't have to use a cutting knife I cut all my bottles with scissors and you cut your bottles uh, leaving enough space for you to put the sand inside plant your plants and hang them up they make wonderful things. You can also make your bird feeders. You can make, a, the children can have a ball making a series of weird and wonderful creatures that they are making. You can also find that you are able to put um, yourself uh, uh, and turn them into hanging baskets, the bigger ones. You can hang up pigs. You can hang up toys. You can make hobby horses with them. They make the children can make wonderful hobby horses. They're such fun by just giving them some Google eyes and hair and ears. It's a lovely horse they can make. And you can also make planters in the garden. And that is great fun by just drawing on different faces onto the containers. These pigs are perfect as a fun exercise in one corner of your garden. So it really makes it nice and easy for you to do. <clears throat> now, let's have a look and see what else we can do. Now, I was actually working with tin cans the other day and I wanted to know all the different things I could do with them and came across a lovely idea using your bottle tops. Putting your bottle tops around your tin can. I haven't quite finished. I've run out of bottle tops at the moment. So as I get more, I will complete it. But you can do it in mixed colors, plain colors. And then your tin, put a couple of holes in the bottom. It's a wonderful planter for planting things in your garden. Nice and bright on your patio. Anyway, the bigger the size of the tin can, the bigger the pot for planting your plants. A dog chew, a wonderful dog chew. Join a whole lot of the um, bottle tops together. Don't put any beads in between. Just make it a circle of bottle tops and tie it tight. They will have a ball. You can throw it. They can catch it. They can chew it. They will eventually chew through all the bottle tops, but they will have had so much fun before them. A little baby can also use it as a rattle if they want. You can build with your uh, bottle tops. You can make a snake for, for children or for, for a, a toy for an animal to play with. You can make magnets. Magnets are wonderful things to make. If you, uh, and all you do is use your magnet that you get on the back of. So often in the post, you get, get sent a, a magnet. Those I chop up. And what I do is I join two bottle tops together. Let me grab a bottle top quickly. From a bottle top collection. You just take two bottle tops 
that are the same size, join them together. These aren't the same make, but it doesn't matter. Now I've got a nice flat back to be able to put my magnet on. And I've got a lovely front to be able to do my design on. Because otherwise it's very difficult to attach a magnet here unless you put a cardboard on the back. But I found just two, putting two bottle tops together worked wonderfully to do that. Now, the other thing you can do with your bottle, top of your bottle, you can take the top of a bottle like this. You can take a bottle top and put some Google eyes on it. And now you cut this into legs. You make nice legs and you make it bright and you can hang it above a baby's crib. And now there's all these beautiful little shy, because it catches the light, the little Google eyes move and the different color bottle tops make a really interesting mobile about where a baby is lying looking at things. You can also use your bottle tops to make the uh, a tic-tac-toe, um, not a drafts, you can do use it with checkers, you can use it with, so you can use your bottle tops if you've got the right number of bottle tops to play a variety of games. You don't have to go out and buy. And if it needs squares, you can make your own squares by weaving paper. And you can make it all different colors and shapes and sizes, and then you can play on it. So if you've gone a camping for a weekend and the children are bored, if you've taken some bottle tops along with you, some paper, they can actually make the tic-tac-toe out of paper just by simple weaving. They can then decorate their own ones that theirs are the noughts and theirs are the crosses. They don't have to be noughts and crosses. They can be bugs and beetles and scary faces or anything else you want. They make themselves three or four of those. And by doing that, they can then create their game. And so not only are they kept busy making the bits for it, afterwards they then play the games and they can have so much fun. You can also, of course, build a robot out of the different bottle tops because different bottle tops will bend in different places. And you can always use a little bit of a bendy straw in amongst it to make the move so that the arms move and things like that. But that you leave to them. They, if they're given a variety of things, they can then choose what they want to use for their particular purpose for whatever they are building. It doesn't have to conform to what we think. I'll never forget when I was at school, there was a poem that we taught the children about a mum, a little girl who goes to school and it's art day. And the teacher says, I want you to paint your mum. And everybody painted their mums. And this little girl painted a circle, then a bigger circle with in green <clears throat> with orange spots on it. And two little like bobbles on either side for arms and two little bobbles for leg, for feet. And the teacher came and had a long talk to her about the fact that mom has got arms and mom's got legs and mom's got a longer body. And when mom came to fetch her at the end of the day, what walked in through the, the door of the school gate was a little round blob with a much bigger blob in green with orange spots and two little hands and two little feet. The little girl had actually drawn her mother particularly accurately, but as it didn't conform to what the teacher thought, she thought it was wrong. And so never, ever underestimate the children. Let them make what they think. It doesn't matter if it doesn't conform to something that you think is right. It's their ideas. They are using their creativity. Let them use it as much as possible. Now, for us to want to build, there are lots of things that we can make. You can make lamps using your bottle tops. You can get perspex and put the bottle tops on the perspex and put a light inside. 
You can use bottle tops on uh, sucker sticks or on um, skewers and put a clock in the center. Lovely way of doing it. Then put on your workings. You can take a whole lot of bottle tops that you have, particularly the metal ones, maybe from a 50th birthday, a 60th birthday, 70th birthday, all those bottle tops and put them into a tray or a table, depending on how many you've got. You put them into the, the dough that goes hard like clay. And you put that in at the bottom and then you secure them in by just pushing them in and allowing it to dry. You can then put a varnish over if you want to, to protect it. But now you've got a really interesting table. And what you'll find is that people will come and they'll say, oh, I gave you that bottle top. Wow, do you remember when we used to drink this? And so it now becomes a talking point. If you don't have enough lids from the different beers and so on, just go to your local pub and ask them. They've got hundreds of them. They just toss them in the bin. If you give them a bucket and you ask them to please put them all in the bucket, you can go after every weekend and probably collect a bucket full. Won't cost you a cent. You can also make very nice coasters. What I've done is I had a whole series, I bought a pack, I think there were five in the pack of chopping boards, this very thin film ones. I can only use one. So the others have been turned into all sorts of things. What I did was I took my, my lids, placed my lids on top and drew around them. Then I cut out what I needed to make the base of my flower. After that, I not only joined them to the base, I also joined them together. And I ended up with a really pretty flower that can be used to put your coffee cup on or your tea cup on afterwards. Even your hot pots, anything like that will be able to stand on this. This plastic is pretty hardy. And so you can make some really pretty ones to go, particularly if you have an outside area that you would like to put them into. So those are some fun ideas using your bottle tops. Now, here are some interesting ideas. We've spoken about the zip. You can make it smaller. You can make it bigger. You can just take two bigger bottoms. Grab two bottoms. There's another bottom. A very big one. And you can put them, I, this one I'd have to cut smaller. They can go on top of each other like this. And you can make fill it with sweets or something for your friend. Put a ribbon around it and it becomes a really interesting holder or container. Or you can put the zip on it and it becomes an openable one. But you can keep your sewing in it. It becomes a wonderful sewing kit. You can use it for so many different things. You can use it as a bird feeder. It's wonderful as a bird feeder. So easy, so quick. And you can use old spoons for their birds to sit on and for the seed to fall into as well. So they really do enjoy that. You can use your um, shampoo bottles. Put a cork on the top so that you can put a sail on it. You can also put a cork on the bottom if you like. You can see whether you need it or not and just two elastic bands. You'll, the children will soon find out, do I want to put some water inside the container to make it stay upright? Otherwise, it might want to fall over. But if it's got water inside it, not a lot, but just some, it will be able to float so much easier. You can build walls with bottles, fill them with sand. They will never, ever move. I promise you, those are some of the strongest walls you could ever want to build. You can build a house out of those. I've seen many houses in Africa built with those. And they are wonderful. They build very, very strong houses. And what they people used to do is they would go to all the dumpsters and go to the, the dump and collect all the plastic bottles they could, fill them with sand and build their homes. 
much stronger than building with tin, which is what a lot of them do. You can also make different holes in the bottles to, in order to put things in from the top, uh, or you can take a very long one and your shoes, let me just grab my shoes from my feet here. Ooh, maybe not such a good idea to try that. I've got found some slippers, put the slippers inside. They fit in very well. All shoes, sandals, slippers, anything fit inside here very easy. They fit to the smaller ones than these as well. And then you just go and take whichever one you want and out comes your shoes. You don't have to go scrabbling for shoes. Quite a nice idea for that. You can also store your um, undies in a short one. Just roll them up and pop them in. Put them all on, on your, in your drawer and you can just pull out one at a time. You can do your makeup, turn the bottles on their side. They make a very nice container, small ones, big ones, and put whatever you want in. You can build a tower of them. You can put pretty uh, ribbon around them. You can paint them. And now you've got containers in order to put all the things in, in your bathroom. Makes a very different kind of of container. You can use your old boots as well. You've got your galoshes. They are now finished. What do you do? Put sand in and turn them into a planter. They work wonderfully as planters in your garden. Right, now came across some ingenious ideas along the way. If you don't have a water sprayer, all you do is make some holes in the bottom of a bottle, attach the bottle to your hose, and voila, you have got your sprinkler system. You can either have a single one at the bottom, or you can just lay it on the lawn with some holes in it, and you can use it as a fantastic sprinkle system. A lovely idea Idea. Whoa, is my idea gone? You want a spade. Not, not, not that it's, it's not that strong, but it's strong enough to pick up things that you want to pick up. All you do is cut your bottle, as can be seen in the picture. You cut your bottle, and there's my piece out of my bottle that I've cut. And now all I have to do is I'll make it nice and smooth all the way around, take the label off, which I didn't do. Um, I was fiddling. And you've got your handle as well. Now you've got a scoop and you can scoop up all sorts of things using your bottles. You can turn them into terrariums as well so that the plants are able to get their moisture inside. So they make wonderful terrariums. You can use them over um, a tap to direct the water and be able to lift it up a little and make it go. Because what, when it's only coming out in one direction, you can't actually spray around. It works very well with a plastic bag on it. And then you are able to make it go. If you don't want to cut your fingers when you're cutting fine stuff and you're not a chef, I inevitably end up sometimes nicking my fingers. I don't anymore. All I do is I put a shorter one of this bottle on the end of my fingers and away I go. Chop, 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 chop. I cannot cut my finger. I can only cut the plastic of the container. I'm quite safe in there. I'm holding it firmly. It holds it beautifully and I've got it. The last one on this particular page that I have for you is how many of you have your phone in one room and you go wandering off to do something in another room and you don't hear it ring. You miss a call. Or when somebody phones you and they're talking quite softly and you're going, I've got it on highest and I still can't hear them. Well, here is your answer. You can take two bottles or two cups. I took two plastic cups. I've just put bright things around them to make it 
look at, uh, very bright for the examples. Take a toilet roll. I actually used roller towel because I needed it longer. My phone is a big phone. It's not a small phone. So I made it the right size. I cut a piece out of it to put my phone into and I cut two holes in the plastic cups. Now, once this is in here, the sound is trapped in here and it comes out through the megaphone on either side. It's loud. You can hear it in the other half of the room. You can hear it next door. So that if you've left your phone like that and somebody rings you, you will hear it ringing. And that's a wonderful way of doing it. You can paint it whatever color suits your particular room. And it's so, so simple to do. Two cups or two bottles, a toilet roll or roller towel, and your phone. Very simple, very easy. Makes for a wonderful hearing device. Now, any questions, Melinda? Any ideas? Okay, right, the last thing we're going to do is make some snowflake ornaments. But these snowflake ornaments don't have to only be for Christmas. You can make them red, white, and blue for um, your 4th of July. You can decorate them and paint stripes on them, paint dots on them, paint stars on them. Just paint them in bright colors of red, white, and blue, not in any particular pattern. And then you hang them with red or white or blue cut, um, thread from the, the trees outside. And they make really pretty decorations. I do give you the example of the, how to make them in your notes with, that you get afterwards. But this is just a fun way of using the bottom of a bottle. I've used a pipe cleaner because a pipe cleaner is nice and easy for me to tie around things. And you can make it into a really pretty thing to hang on your tree. It sparkles and with the colors, it will really make it attractive for 4th of July. Well, that is as far as we go. There is what you get as to how to make it, how to cut them using your just your scissors and tying on your different things that you've got. You can hang them on any tree for any occasion and make it into an attractive way to do things. All right, now, thank you so much for being part of the class with me. I hope that the people who were sitting at home listening were able to also get some benefit from it. Did you find anything that you liked, Melinda, while you were watching? You can type it if you don't want to speak. Okay, no, that's fine. Well, thank you so much for being part of the class. Everybody that's watching live, it's bedtime for you too. I hope to see you all in my earlier classes next month. My classes will be a bit earlier. Have a great evening.